So the subject of crime or the subject of criminal responsibility, just so it's, you know, to understand that uh, at our legislation or world, uh, and like a, the criminal legislation of all uh, modern countries, we have the same situation with the characteristics of subject of crime. Uh, because if we uh, are saying that crime is an action uh, forbidden by criminal law, which is done by, uh, or which is produced by subject of crime, we try to understand what subject of crime is. During all ages, we are getting the specific glimpses and subject of crime from, for example, uh, can, uh, uh, means of nature like uh, water, like river, and so on and so forth. And like our dogs, uh, which are somewhere or cats, firing cats is a situation when we are saying, for example, of uh, Spanish Inquisition. Uh, article 18 of uh, the Criminal Court of Ukraine, it has uh, special parts. So Article 18 of the Criminal Court of Ukraine uh, just told us that uh, subject of crime is a physical, normal, just sane, uh, so physical, normal, sane person that has committed a crime at age from which criminal liability should exist. So that is a physical person, that is a same person, that is a person uh, normal, uh, that is a person that committed a crime, and that is a person that committed a crime at the age from criminal responsibility exists. What does it mean? It means that we are working only with physical persons, not legal persons, not special entities, no social, uh, uh, no social um, uh, entities too, because or social units, for example, special you know, parties. Some people say uh, that we are working with the organization and with special criminal organization. Yes, there was a period of time, especially in. Uh, during the Second World War and after it, when we have a special tribunals, uh, where some representatives of the special uh, units of Nazi Germany, mm. or, not Nazi Germany, but uh, exactly, well, uh, Romania or uh, German satellites, uh, well, uh, were prosecuted especially Narvan Tribunal uh, give uh, special permission to uh, prosecute every member of the SS organization. That was the fact, because they said that, that this organization was fully connected with the genocide. But from the other points of view, that this, that this situation, for example, we have now, uh, you know, this uh, uh, case, Poluk against Ukraine, uh, the case uh, under which uh, European Court of Human Rights uh, said that sometimes uh, we should be uh, very sensitive when we use the law uh, on uh, this specific uh, kind of uh, uh, well activity of uh, our. Um, New governments, uh, just to say that uh, we understand that the law under which we uh, postpone the possibility to people to work, depending on their work during the Yanukovych period of time, and during the CPSU, or during their membership in uh, KGB, and so on and so forth. It was very interesting the decision of the European Court because they said, well, guys. The, uh, if you are the member of organization, like KGB, or if you are the member of Communist Party and the founder of Communist Party, that is not uh, the possibility to extradite you from your social function. Because uh, of time, 
because of uh, new era, because of uh, uh, making it impossible to create uh, well, these kinds of work activity. From the other point of view, you regarding a support of the European Court said that, okay, there was a process, there was a, a specific law in Ukraine, and the cases to uh, reach the useless uh, uh, law under European, uh, uh, European understanding. Of the so that is why European criminal law and, Europe, uh, and uh, Ukrainian criminal law is not working with organizations. That is the decision of European Court, especially for Ukraine, and that is why we are doing everything making our uh, in this field. Uh, it's a person, uh, not legal person. Sometimes we are saying about persons in uh, criminal relationships, but to Ukraine, uh, criminal law uh, to Ukrainian criminal legal doctrine, uh, the juridical persons are not the subjects of criminal liability, are not the subjects of crime. They are not included in the list. From the other point of view, we have a quasi uh, criminal responsibility of juridical persons. What does it mean? Uh, since uh, September the 1st of uh, 2014, at the Criminal Court of Ukraine, there were uh, included some norms uh, which were connected with the uh, so kind uh, uh, criminal uh, measures, criminal preventive measures to, uh, to, 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 to uh, Political persons who were involved in the process of corruptive crime. The idea is that uh, September 2000, the United Nations General Assembly was uh, adopted uh, so called uh, well, uh, uh, United Nations Convention on uh, Struggle, I forgot, Struggle of Prevention. Uh, so United Nations Convention struggled with transnational organized crime. And one of the points of this convention was uh, the obligation of the states to create a responsibility of juridical persons during their legislation. Sometimes we're saying that, okay, we have a responsibility of juridical persons, uh, especially in this field, in uh, special kinds of administrative legislation. That's why we're trying to use it. But it is not the same situation to, oh, it was not the same situation to our, uh, our partners from the United Nations. And after, well, two, uh, well, 40 years after, uh, just uh, adopting of our criminal court of 2001. We were uh, saying in that situation that we were adopting a quasi-legal responsibility for juridical persons who are involved in corruptive crimes. I can't say that it is right, because as for me, it would be it would be better if we are uh, if we are uniting uh, the responsibility and liability of juridical persons and physical persons as a whole as the main subject from one point of view. From the second point of view, we're, we're seeing, uh, we're giving some, some, some information about the ideas of what we have to do with the uh, juridical concept, yes. Uh, the case is that, that uh, okay, there is no head of a juridical person, we can't cut it. The criminal court is, uh, <laughs> criminal law, you know, especially in the Ukrainian or Slavic tradition, that is criminal or ugalovna prava, the uh, law which is connected with our possibility to use our head for different uh, uh, purposes. Uh, from this point of view, some people said that juridical person has no, especially uh, any element of uh, uh, 
positions which are given in the subject matter of crime. Something you know, when they're saying you are, for example, of uh, these guys or girls. I don't know whether it's right or not, but uh, now we use, uh, we have to use this uh, kinds of activity, not only uh, regarding the ideas of corruptive crimes, we have to use this kind of activity uh, mostly with the characteristics of uh, environmental crimes, mostly with the characteristics of some uh, business crimes in the businesses, or crimes, market crimes, because, well, we're, if we are looking at the European Union, we just find that market abuse, that is the main element of crime that they are analyzed on a multinational level. That's why market abuse, which is made by, for example, some of the corporations, yes, that is uh, a very specific manner that should be regulated in the criminal code too. And we'll do that. But I hope that we will do that in uh, next uh, drafting of our criminal code, which is uh, at work now. From another point of view, we have uh, additional, uh, very specific information when we're saying about physical persons, not physical persons, yes. When we're saying that uh, about uh, a very, very specific kind of uh, person we have uh, it's our uh, nowadays life I'm just saying about artificial uh, intelligence From one point of view AI it is something like blah 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 of science of psychologists or uh, well specialists in health communications and so on and so forth but from the other point artificial intelligence is working now in U.S. legislation. It is working, for example, uh, in a Canadian virtual court for minor offenses. It's very interesting. You just try to understand that if you just call this court, well, only an artificial uh, well, robot will uh, try to uh, give you information, will try to mediate your problem. Uh, in, First five stage, stages, and only of, after five stages of communicating with you, then uh, the physical person, then the judge will work with you. That is the case. That is why artificial intelligence will work and will try to do something with it. For example, uh, Professor Bowen, the head of uh, the group of uh, our scientists, where Mr. Stelzo, for example, is working too. So Professor Baulin, when discussing the problem of subject of crime, said that it would be better that we'll give a, a broad understanding of subject of crime, right? which will unite physical persons, uh, then uh, uh, some guys or girls, uh, uh, well, in the, the case when we're working with the, uh, Juridical persons, uh, well, and third, is when we well, artificial intelligence too. When we're saying about juridical persons, the Ukrainian legislation, you know, have a very specific uh, position under which the physical person, uh, as a director of uh, legal entity, has to be charged as legal entity too in some situation, is situation which is connected with the acts of corruption. Uh, physical person. Well, what are the physical persons? Are you know, the characteristics of this physical person should be analyzed in criminal law? Uh, you know that Article Eight and said that uh, that is the physical persons which uh, just committed the crime at age from which criminal responsibility should exist. It's a very interesting position, and that's why uh, well, age or age of criminal responsibility. That's a very specific themes to it, criminal law of nowadays. From one point of view, it's very simple. Yes, we have two levels. The general level, where every guy or girl, every citizen is uh, obliged to uh, be uh, prosecuted after uh, gaining 16 years of law. For grave crimes, for, uh, which categories are 
uh, well, uh, given into criminal law for some rare or grave crimes, uh, this responsibility begins from 14 years old. From some situation, uh, one could say if a guy or girl is not a uh, subject of crime because of his age, but has committed a specific act like crime, for example, has committed a burglary, yes, but it is, uh, well, a guy or girl has committed a murder at 13 years old, yes. 13 years old, you try to understand it, it is not uh, the age of criminal responsibility. But from the other point of view, we have the possibility to use the specific norms which are located at uh, the chapter of the general part of criminal code of Ukraine, uh, due to what we are, have the possibility to use a specific preventive measures uh, to these guys. So this, this is not, <coughs> not a criminal responsibility. This is a criminal preventive measures which we use for the guys and girls who are not the subject of crime. There is a typical understanding of what we have to do with the situation. For example, we didn't know anything about uh, the age. So we have to uh, make a specific expertise. And when we didn't know the age, for example, uh, in the case uh, when we uh, know the average age of age of people, so the calculated motion will begin for, since the first day of uh, the first month of the year, since January the 1st. And the situation when we know about the month, the calculation will begin from the last day of the month. Understand that? Okay, what uh, is the gap with the age of criminal responsibility? There is some, there is some interesting positions. From one point of view, the United Nations and the United Nations Crime Committee, Crime Congresses, and two specific documents, documents which were connected with the rules of uh, treatment of uh, minor offenders, yes, it's Beijing rules, um, uh, well, every uh, specific rules. Well, well, we are working with the situation when the cases of prevention of crime, juvenile crime, are connected with one um, quotation. Children has the right to mistake. The right to mistake means that in some situation one can use the specific measures of criminal responsibility, but we can't do. Uh, uh, well, measures of treatment. That is why, for example, it's our legislation. We have specific. Uh, the end of the main part of our lecture, we will discuss it, but it could be at the second session uh, for the, uh, the exam. Okay, we have no limit of our conference, and uh, that is why we have to speak uh, again. That is a, a, a gift for Zoom uh, during this week. That's why. It is uh, more better for you uh, to try to uh, listen to uh, lectures uh, of our tutors during this period of time. I hope it will be interesting to you. Uh, age of criminal liability due to United Nations standards means that sometimes we have price this liability. For what reason? From one point of view, it's very <clears throat> there's a very specific, two very specific processes of <clears throat> the genesis of uh, millennials. Well, you are the millennial, by the way. Uh, so the genesis of the millennials, is the genesis of new generation, shows us that they begin to. to be more and more sophisticated. That's why, for example, if you use mobile phones or something like that, uh, it's hard to do for the people who are uh, you know, joining uh, the situation at the beginning of the 90s, or for example, just for myself, yes, well, sometimes I can't understand anything in uh, the processes of programming in some uh, for my uh, relatives do their best in that. Yeah, I, I can't do that. 
that's a real fact. I'm not a student. From one point of view, from the second point of view, we are standing in very interesting processes when some people, especially young people, make their life not better, but they uh, use their brains by the another world, another means, because it is more similar to Google some information than to use a book or use something else and so on and so forth. That's why from some of the criminologists <laughs> there, there is widespread an idea to shorten the age of criminal responsibility to 10 or 7 years old. By the way, uh, the United Kingdom uh, or Canada or some uh, uh, states of commonwealth, there is a very interesting situation. The age of criminal responsibility for uh, some uh, of our translators or interpreters, the age of criminal responsibility begins from seven years old. Is it right or not? Yes and no. Exactly not for the uh, characteristics, for the meaning and understanding of what criminal responsibility is. And not uh, for the situation when we are, uh, well, the mood, when we are saying, uh, that uh, criminal, exactly criminal responsibility begins from 14 years old or from 12 years old. What is, uh, what is the case? The case is that due to our legislation or due to uh, legislation of Great Britain, uh, uh, England and Wales, uh, so they have a limitation of responsibility since seven years old. This means that since seven till 12, they use additional treatment, not criminal responsibility. That is the idea. That's why we can't say that uh, the age of criminal responsibility in some of common law countries is diminution. Mm -hmm. So we have the same situation. For example, uh, well, a minor from 10 years to 14 years should be put in special uh, places of, uh, non-freedom, you, you know this um, understanding of freedom which is used by well, the United Nations Convention Against Torture. Here in Ukraine we had 42 places of, for example, well, uh, hospitals for elderly. This is uh, for, uh, places for, of non-freedom. Well, the internet and so forth, of so course they're also places of non-freedom and sometimes this place of non-freedom is used for uh, minors who commit uh, crime being no subject of the crime. That is the idea that age processes should differ each other. From one point of view, age should be an element of uh, uh, not only the general element of crime, but sometimes it should be a specific element of crime which qualify uh, the specific crime. For example, when we're saying uh, some words about uh, crimes against judiciary, and we know that if the subject of crime should be professional judge, it should be connected with the, some limitations of his uh, uh, age, because uh, here in this country, one should uh, be uh, involved to pass an exam for being a professional judge, only after 30 years old, with specific practice and so on and so forth. The same uh, measures we can, for example, we get, for example, uh, in cases uh, which are connected with investigators, or which are connected with uh, military men, which are connected with uh, police officers, and so on and so forth. This is the limitation. Or, for example, if uh, you want to be a president, yes. <laughs> The same situation we have in that. Okay, uh, next position, sanity. It is not very simple and very affordable position because sanity is the characteristic that the person is normal. And uh, you have to be sane if you are understand uh, your antisocial behavior and you understand the consequences of behavior, understand it characteristics of the behavior and its consequences. That is the elements of sanity. Sanity means that you not only understand, but you have the possibility to rule your 
behavior, uh, regulating it with the characteristic of antisocial behavior and its uh, uh, constituents. If you have a chronic stable physical disease, if you have a specific uh, disgarmonizing uh, processes in your psyche, you have to be expelled from criminal liability because you are insane. You know that uh, we have a specific uh, state of mind or state of, of uh, psychology of some people who are in, being insane because part of me they are idiots. And idiotism, that's an illness. That is not a, well, a glimpse or, well, a narrative for some kinds of people which is used in internet resources. That is an illness. And that's why these guys are not involved in the process because they shouldn't understand the antisocial behavior. They shouldn't understand the legal characteristics of this behavior and they shouldn't understand the consequences of this behavior. If you know everything about these three elements, you have to be involved in the list. Exactly one or two or three specific elements or specific uh, situations. Uh, what I want to say about this situation, one of them that is so-called limited sanity. Limited sanity means that judge has to be, uh, has to be uh, in a position to uh, understand it has to be in a position to get you a specific information or to get well uh, a defendant the specific information about his limited sanity and to use this limited sanity criteria uh while uh sentencing this guy or girl or not from one point of view limited sanity that is the kind of defense which is used by advocates. That is the kind of defense which is used by every, uh, just uh, every legal system. Because, uh, for example, it's psychiatric side of mind should be used uh, when we just produce uh, specific norms uh, or specific decisions while we give uh, while we give uh, a decision on uh, well, um, putting a girl or girl in a preventive uh, detention. What is, uh, well, if you uh, look from for my lecture. Uh, well, uh, on uh, the characteristics of uh, subject matter of crime, just I say some words about the case uh, which was connected to, uh, with the ECHR decision against Germany when the uh, European Court of Human Rights in the case of Wilson Cower against Germany said that yes, uh, if a defendant is a psychiatric psychopath, and the violence, sexual psychopath, or the decision of German court to make, uh, well, a specific uh, possibility to put this guy uh, to a preventive detention is rare. As for me, yes, it's very specific and a very, very, very sensitive decision. That is why, for example, our legislation can't use it at the full so we are seeing at our law that we have to check psychiatric changes. We have to check the characteristics of the psychiatric ability of people to understand something. You understand? Do you understand? Well, sometimes uh, we have a specific ability to understand some situation. For example, you know that in Cuba, the Cuban uh, legislation, women in this special periods of their life, they have to defend some of them because they have a specific reaction. Sometimes we have a specific reaction which are connected with our diabetes, for example. Yes, if you are going to diabetes coma, you have to eat something, and if you can't eat something, you uh, will be uh, in this uh, sense of insanity and so on and so forth. Sometimes we use specific defenses which are connected 
not only with uh, uh, partial insanity, yes, but which are connected with other states of our minds or other states of uh, our activity. So I want to say some words about. Uh, I want to say some words about uh, boom, 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 about uh, immunities. About immunities, it's very interesting too. Uh, you remember that the crime is uh, an act of uh, individual behavior, which is prohibited by law, which is uh, antisocial, which is guilty, which is punishable, which is made by the subject of crime. Yes, if we can't. The subject of crime, there is no crime. If we can't insanity, there is no crime. If we can't uh, social uh, dangerousness, there is no crime. If we can't uh, legal characteristic, there is no crime. So we have to understand uh, an essence of crime when we put together all of these elements. Sure, understandable. And if some people have an immunity, what do you have to do in this situation? For example, the spouses. Does the spouses have immunities? Yes. A very specific one. For example, the spouses have immunities uh, not to produce any proof against, uh, well, their relatives. In the case where they, for example, commit a crime. That's the kind of, well, of special immunity which we have to use for example when we're saying some words about uh well crimes with the spouses as uh, well not as a victims but as a witnesses there's a witness immunity from one point of view the immunity of president the immunity of judge the immunity of uh, uh members of uh specific commissions and so on and so forth, the immunity of public servants. Are they exist, or people's deputies? Yes. And the existence of these immunities means that sometimes we can't prosecute the charge against them because it is forbidden. The immunities of diplomats and the members of their uh, families. Yes, it exists, and that's why we use it sometimes. But sometimes it is, uh, uh, well, it is connected with the specific ideas under which we uh, can't uh, give uh, the possibility to uh, charge these people, but we have to expel them. So expelling diplomats, expelling the member of uh, uh, their families is a very popular diplomatic measure. For example, in Great Britain, there was a, a very, very dynamic case when uh, wife of uh, one of American diplomats make a traffic offense and kill a youngster somewhere in the Wales, if I'm not mistaken, was expelled from this country. And after that, uh, all of the people of the England, especially media, just asked for uh, criminalizing her behavior and asked to charge her because they want her to hunt. That's the case sometimes, especially now when uh, people's understanding of what they have to do or not is connected with specific kinds of, uh, well, immunities. You know, for example, we are given this immunity uh, or we have to give these immunities or have the possibility to give uh, these immunities for some people when we release them from uh, criminal responsibility uh, in case of amnesty. You know that mass amnesty after the law of mass amnesty after <coughs> Maidan gave us a very specific understanding of what the amnesty is. We'll be discussing this problem after maybe, uh, well, in a week or two. Uh, I don't know, personally, we'll do it personally, I hope. Or uh, via internet, but you know that uh, sometimes it's interesting to do that uh, via internet resources too. Uh, specific uh, characteristics of immunities should be used for some uh, crimes uh, of uh, international character or at which we have uh, a specific uh, understanding of what 
uh, international character is and uh, uh, under the article 6 of uh, well uh, European Court of Human Rights should uh, uh, evolve it uh, at the least. What I, did, uh, uh, I mean? I mean this is the right for a fair trial should use for a specific situation of asylum. Uh, when some people ask for political asylum, yes, and came from different regions where they were repressed, we have to use the process of immunities for these people too. That is the concept of uh, United, uh, United Nations Convention that, uh, on Asylums. That's the concept of uh, European Convention too. That is why we use it in this situation. Sometimes the specific kinds of immunities should be done to witnesses to protect them from organized crimes activity or from transnational crime. Sometimes we use the specific immunities well, <clears throat> uh, to protect people <clears throat> who are involved in criminal investigating processes. That is, uh, but these are procedural immunities. Try to understand once more. This criminal responsibility exists in three well, paths. One of them is criminal limb, and all which are connected with criminal responsibility in the criminal process and criminal proceeding. The second one is uh, uh, well, criminal procedural limb, which is connected with the realization of uh, criminal norm during procedural norms and so on and so forth. And the third one is ideological or sociological <clears throat> mean, which is connected with mostly political idea. For example, corruption uh, or the acts of corruption just existed since ancient Greeks. But the political will is uh, it's mostly specific for us for understanding what corruption is, is and how could we struggle with corruption. That is the possibility. That is the case we are working together and what we that we will do our best. Special subjects, special subjects of crime. Special subjects of crime under Article uh, 18 of the Criminal Court of Ukraine, that's uh, uh, criminals who exist in the specific regions or, or uh, at specific norms. Pardon. By the way, we have more than 60, 60 persons, try to understand it, 60 persons of norms is our criminal code, which are, should be done by special subjects of crime. Special subjects are classified by age. Some crimes should be done only by minors, some crimes by people who attend 16 years old, sometimes people who will be 18, some uh, crimes who will be 25, some crimes who will be 30 years old. That is the case. Uh, it would be connected with the social characteristics like public person, yes, and the public persons should be subjects of specific crimes against well, uh, public interest like bribery, or like corruptive acts. This is understandable. Sometimes we use a broad definition of uh, special subjects, a broad definition of special subjects, when we are saying about military men, or when we are saying about the governmental, uh, governmental uh, representatives, yes, uh, or public servants uh, in, in international level. For example, when we say the government of representatives from other countries who are the subject of corruption. These all elements are uh, evolved in the characteristics of uh, special subjects which are given to us at Article 18 of the Criminal Code of Ukraine. Try to look at it and after that you uh, have more sophisticated information on it. One more question maybe I will start with it in one of the next lectures or because it's uh, not a question of two minutes. That's the difference between subject of crime and subject of uh, well, and person of criminal. Criminology, social psychology, use person of criminal because we are interested in personality. 
what are the motives, what is the motivation, what is the process of, for ma of formatting of this motives and motivation. That is the case of criminology. For the case of uh, criminal law, we're interested only on formal characteristics of subject of crime. For example, subject of crime, he would be a recidivist, yes, who just are connected to a bunch of crimes. From the other points of view, we use a criminological characteristic of recidivist as a professional criminal. And professional criminal who is connected to a bunch of crimes should be treated with another cases, with another possibilities and another understanding. These differences between subject of crime and the characteristic of a person would be the theme of our one very short lecture, which I will uh, uh, put uh, at my uh, resource, uh, my channel uh, at uh, internet. I strongly recommend you once again to register uh, to this channel and to use these lectures for your understanding of what crime is. So that is the end of my nowadays lecture. I'm very happy that 41 uh, students joined me for uh, this situation and I hope that we uh, will, will overcome this coronavirus.